Dr. Walsh, Dr. Pappas, thanks for coming to uh, the headquarters here at Avalon Biomed in Houston. Pleasure to have you. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks yeah. for having us. Appreciate your time. Hey, just to kind of kick things off, I just wanted to kind of get some background uh, on your dental school residency and, and kind of what you're up to now. I'm from Iowa. I went to college and dental school at the University of Iowa. Uh, I got the opportunity to come to Texas for my residency at Texas A&M Baylor College of Dentistry and uh, got here as, as they say, I got here as fast as I could. Once I got here, I decided never to leave. And I now practice just outside of the DFW Metroplex in Keller, Texas. Awesome. And I've been there for the last nine years. Awesome. Thank you. Dr. Pappas. So I'm originally from New York. I uh, attended SUNY at Buffalo School of Dental Medicine to receive my DDS, followed by my GPR residency at Stony Brook University Hospital. I eventually made it down to Houston, where I completed my certificate in endodontics and received my master's degree as well. Um, that was last year, and I've been in private practice in the Woodlands as a partner in a private practice for about a year. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And thanks again for taking time, guys. I really appreciate getting your feedback and, and kind of the story on uh, your journey with both the bioceramic portion of Avalon Biomed and the file system as well, the endodontic system. Just to kind of kick things off, what prompted you to look at the bioceramics at Avalon? That's a great question. Uh, I've been interested in bioceramics uh, ever since I was in residency 10, 11 years ago. And so I've actually got introduced to Avalon Biomed products about at that time. And so that we were working on some of the prototype products, working on some of the self-mix Neo-MTA products. And so I've been connected with them ever since some of the foundations were laid for the new pre-mix sealer and putty. And so I've been interested in those and, and helping them work through some of the, uh, the prototypes of those for the last decade. So 10 years, wow. Yeah, so it's been a pretty integral part of our practice for a long time. Awesome. Dr. Pax. So in residency, uh, part of my thesis was looking at the physical, chemical, and biologic properties of bioceramic sealers. So naturally, gathering sealers together and um, comparing them uh, was important to the research. And one of the sealers we chose was Neo Sealer Flow from Avalon Biomed. Really liked the way it handled, uh, really liked the results of the study. And so when entering private practice, it only felt natural to bring uh, one of the sealers from that study into private practice, and that sealer was near sealer flow. Well, that's great. I'm just curious as to some of the specifics of why you made that choice. Sure. So some of the studies we looked at included the flow of the sealer, uh, solubility, uh, calcium ion release, uh, radiopacity, and neo sealer flow uh, did extremely well in all those studies. And that's really the quality of sealer that you're looking for when trying to incorporate a, a sealer into your practice. Awesome. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way as Dr. Pappas and that I think the, the bioactivity, the, the flowability of the material, but <clears throat> things also that I consider the, the flexibility and the, the ease of use in practice. I can use that same sealer for cold techniques, for warm techniques. I don't have to pivot and use another product. I can use that same product through and through. And uh, one thing that we're thinking about nowadays is the bottom line. And so the bottom line here is that the Neo Sealer Flow is, a, is more cost effective than other options on the market. That's great. So specifically, can you tell me within treatment um, some of the advantages of the sealer? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, one of the things I like the best is that it comes with a flex flow tip. And so that's a low waist tip. Not only does it have a small cannula that fits deep into the tooth, I can very precisely administer that into the apical third of the canal, but it's also not wasting any material. I know I'm not leaving any material behind in the tip that could be used to fill other canals. And the other thing keeping in mind on that same vein is that that helps the bottom line. It, uh, reducing waste is, is always a good thing. Absolutely. So coming from uh, a, an academic study and then putting into private practice, you can notice things that um, may seem excellent on paper, but really are practical in clinical life. And one of those things is the, uh, the way it handles with warm vertical and application of heat. By applying uh, heat to the canals, um, around 200 to 250 degrees uh, Celsius. There's really no clumping noticed. I'm able to condense and um, uh, not desiccate the canals, which is really important, um, especially with the properties of calcium ion release that I noted earlier. Um, it's an, just an excellent sealer, especially in our hands. So here in you both, is there any type of obturation that you can't use this sealer with? I think that's the beauty of this product is that I feel comfortable using this with all teeth that come in. I don't have to pivot to another product. I just have this one sealer and it handles all of my needs. If I need something that's a little thicker or to fill a larger canal, well, then we have Neo Putty or the self-mix materials right, 
uh, right alongside. So we're using one family of bioactive products to treat every single case that comes through my practice. So per our conversation earlier today, um, I'd be really interested to uh, hear from you why you even chose to take a look at a different system. Uh, that, that's funny that you asked. I was going to say that made you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as an endodontist, I am just adverse to change in general. I mm -hmm. think that's the nature of the beast. Uh, so I wasn't looking for a file system. It's one of those things where Christian just came to me and, and asked if I'd be willing to try something for him. I said, sure. You know, as a friend, I'd be, I'd be happy to try it for you. And one thing led to another. And, you know, all of a sudden we started trying this and started enjoying it. And my partners and I both used it. And the only question we had at the end of the samples was, where can we get more and when can we get more? So it's one of those things we stumbled on upon blind luck. Uh, it really just kind of fell into our lap and we ended up falling in love with it. And since that time, we've been exclusively using the Avalon file system. So just before I move over to Dr. Pappas, um, compelling reasons. Uh, you fell in love with it, you know, wanted more of it. Um, what are kind of the top one or two reasons why? Why did it make you want to change? Um, again, great question. I have, I have three criteria that I think really fit this file system well, and I call it the DES of the Avalon uh, file system. Durability, efficiency, and flexibility. I feel like I can use these files with, with a lot of confidence, not being concerned if they're gonna start to unwind or separate like we had talked earlier. Uh, I feel like they navigate canals uh, superiorly compared to other file systems that I've used in the past. Uh, and I definitely don't have to worry about obtrading canals with nickel titanium because they're so <laughs> flexible and durable that yeah. I feel very confident. Absolutely. Dr. Pappas? Yeah, so Dr. Walsh is 100% correct. Change is tough. Um, coming right out of residency, uh, you're almost ingrained in a way that you've learned, uh, and sometimes hard, uh, change can be hard. However, you know, you're always maybe questioning that maybe there's a better system out there. And so um, while I did enjoy my system that I was using from residency, um, I was definitely eager, um, a little bit maybe more eager than, than Dr. Walsh to try a new system, to try to get my hands on something that was maybe working better mm -hmm. uh, in my hands. And so uh, Christian approached me as well, and I was uh, more than happy to to try out the the new system, and um, I've, I've been enjoying it ever since. What are some of the specific reasons that you enjoyed, you know, from from the get go, the system? So my system that I'm currently using actually requires me to mix and match files from different manufacturers uh, and, and different brands, and so um, having all my files that get my results that I'm looking for uh, under one um, family of, of instruments is extremely, extremely helpful and um, very easy to use. And just like Dr. Walsh mentioned, um, very confident when putting a file on a canal. Uh, one of the drawbacks that I had with my original system was I was noticing some separations, um, some uh, unwinding of files. And once you take away a lot of that, those problems, you actually notice that you become more confident and, and um, can attack problems in different cases uh, with a little bit more confidence. Was there a big change in technique or did the did the system kind of um, look like your other systems, but with some some benefits that you mentioned? It's a good question. So it's different enough that you understand that it's a different file system. However, it's um, keeping a lot of the same principles. And I think that's important when switching to a new file system is um, being able to take techniques that you do enjoy and apply them to, in our opinion, better files. Um, trying to learn a new system with new files and uh, basically relearn endo is not um, ideal when you're uh, you know, in practice. And as we were talking earlier, I kind of understood and found out that you guys don't do the same thing clinically. And the system allows you to do two different things. It'll be hard to find an Adonis, I think, that uh, we'll all agree on a, on a single technique. Agreed. And so um, I think this suite of files really um, encompasses all our needs. What about you from, yeah, from a technique standpoint? Yeah, what I really like it, that Dr. Paps has already touched on is that <clears throat> Uh, it's easy to learn uh, because it's labeled similarly to things we've used in the past, such as Pro Taper. So now we have Z one, two, three, four, up through seven, um, and and those things are very parallel to systems we've used in the past. But rather than combining a Pro Taper with a Vortex or Pro Taper with a Sapphire, we have the same ability to do that all under one family. So we can take the system start to finish all the way through the blue shapers, uh, or we can switch and go to apical shapers. So in the cases where we're trying to be more minimally invasive, we can use the slim shapers or apical shapers, which really have special properties and special focuses to help clean those areas of the canals so that we're maintaining 
a conservative access, conservative shaping, but still chemomechanically debriding the canal space, as we know, is important. So from a technique standpoint, it sounds like it's got some flexibility there. Not a, not a lot of, I have to do something different, but maybe just some advances in technology. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of those advances are very intuitive once you have the file system in hand. Is there any canals or situations within a patient that this system couldn't handle, that you'd have to go outside? That Edo, can't handle? Uh, yes. Calcification, I don't think there's any case uppers, that I don't, lowers. Yeah, I don't think there's any case that I would be concerned about uh, taking these files to, uh, to approach. Uh, whether it's pedo larger spaces, we have uh, the Z6 and Z7 to accommodate those with also maintaining some flexibility. Uh, but as far as the calcified, the multi-curvatures, uh, we'll show some cases later on that I think really exemplify why these files are a cut above the rest and are truly the sixth generation of rotary files to come to the market. What's been your experience with the, the variety of cases you see in your office? I agree. Uh, there's really no case that's come through my door that has made me reach for a different system or um, doubt the system that's in my hand. Um, so, again, there's cases where uh, we see this all the time, open apices, um, cases where we need a very large file, very small file, um, very thin file. Um, these cases are all handled by the um, instruments that we've been given. How do you guys kind of walk me through um, your experience and your story of how the files mirror up to the sealer and your obturation technique? One of the things that I liked best uh, when I got these files was they had corresponding gutta percha points as well as paper points. Uh, so I feel that when I'm entering the obturation process, I can thoroughly dry. I know I'm getting contact with the canal space to thoroughly dry. Uh, but equally as important, they're a variable taper. So a traditional cone, unless you're doing some type of heated technique, isn't going to conform to that exact shape. And so these variable taper cones that are uh, that are made to follow these, these file patterns are, are impeccable. They fit very well. I feel like that lends itself to doing a single cone technique uh, with neo sealer flow, placing that sealer in the apical third, and then introducing the, the Avalon file cone. And I think it fits and adapts very well. Limiting variability during obturation is key. Uh, making sure that the steps from your finishing file um, to your final radiograph um, are in line is important. So having those paper points fit, having those gutter percha points fit, uh, is is makes life a lot easier. Um, you know when you're working through a case. So thank you for that information about your technique and how kind of one system mirrors the other. I was wondering if you'd go a little bit deeper and how you chose which files from Avalon that would work best with your current technique, that there wouldn't be a big technique change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, I had mentioned earlier that the Avalon Biomed files mirror uh, some of the pro taper instruments going S1 or Z1 all the way up. And so to me, that's an intuitive switch. Uh, one of the things I think is a step ahead with Avalon files is the pink metallurgy. Uh, it's the only multi-alloy file system uh, on the market right now. And so they utilize the pink alloy as their Z1 or their initial coronal shaper uh, canal navigation file. It's flexible in that it's a small diameter file, but it's robust in that it uses the pink metallurgy, which is kind of a happy medium between the blue and the gold. So working my way up from Z1, then we get into the, the blue metallurgy of Z2. Uh, most of the time I skip Z3 because I, I feel that that's kind of a redundant file with Z2. And this is all part of the Blue Shaper family? All part of the Blue Shaper family. So move from Blue Shaper Z1, 2, up to 4. And that's equivalent to about a 2506, give or take. And so from there, I can either decide to follow up the Blue Shaper line and go up uh, to Z7 or Z6, more like an 06 type of canal. Or if I'm trying to be a little bit more conservative or I think it's an 04 taper type of canal, I'll switch to the apical shapers, which I think are a... a, a beautiful asset or complement to the Blue Shaper file system because they're that parallelogram cross-section and they're an O3 taper. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a, 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 an efficient cutting file that really allows you uh, to finesse that apical one or two millimeters, which we all know is the most critical part in a root canal. Absolutely. So what's the smallest apical shaper as far as tip and taper? And then what is the largest? What, how, what's the biggest? So the smallest apical shaper is a 3003 mm. and the largest is a 5003. Mm. Is that does that encompass uh, the majority of the canals you see? Yeah, by far and away, it encompasses the majority. I mean, there's always going to be a few outliers both above and below. Uh, but I think, you know, day in and day out of the routine cases, these are hitting 95%. Awesome. Dr. Pappas, what was your previous system? And then how did you, you find that match within Avalon? 
a fairly similar technique. Um, one being uh, starting with Pro Taper, trying to enlarge that coronal third, being able to safely and um, easily get our files down to the apical third. Um, so starting with a, a Z1 and a Z2, um, creating that glide path and that um, flaring in the coronal third. And then afterwards, once I've been able to reach working length, um, I have been using the apical shaper a little bit more frequently. I like keeping that conservative um, in the apical third and then also using my warm vertical technique to fill in the slightly larger coronal third. Um, I found that the the, uh, the gutta percha cones work extremely well. Um, we're working with an 03 taper, so um, it's a different taper than, than you know we're used to, um, but keeping that conservative um, it has been excellent. What does good look like for you from a coronal flare standpoint? Yeah, so uh, wide enough that we're able to access the middle and apical third, but not wide enough that we're in, uh, encroaching on some danger zones. There's different anatomy and different teeth, and putting a large instrument into these dangerous zones can create a failure that maybe could have been avoided with a different instrument. What do you use for the, the, the bigger teeth, the, the teeth that need a bigger coronal flare? Yes. Is there an instrument for that? The Blue Shaper offers larger files, right? So the uh, Z6, Z7, um, these files can be used in larger canals. And what that does is allows um, debridement um, of walls that are obviously further apart um, and keeps our preps um, in a, a form that is able to be obturated with the corresponding gutta percha cones. And are you making a lot of adjustments to your gutta percha cones as far as, you know, um, apex, you know, using the scissors, clipping, adjusting? Yeah, I'm not. I don't, I don't know if you're seeing that, but I, I'm seeing that uh, uh, from my finishing file to paper point to gutta percha, um, a very consistent fit, a very reliable fit, and, and that's that's definitely um, improving the cases. And one of the things that, that I like as well about talking about that coronal flaring is that the blue shapers are all less than one millimeter in the maximum instrument Correct. diameter. So I feel that even if you are increasing up to the, the Z6, which is a 4007 variable, or a fi uh, Z7, right. which is a 5007 sure. or take variable taper, you're still maintaining the maximum in instrument diameter of less than one. So you're which still being minimally invasive while allowing maximum chemomechanical debridement Absolutely. all within the same same realm. And in talking to you guys earlier with your previous techniques, your maximum fluid diameter was 1.2. Right around. Yeah, with, right. with the conventional files and yeah. you know it, the, the pro taper system, you're going to end up with a 1.2 at your coronal flare. And that's, that's just the nature of the beast. Absolutely. We'd love to hear about if this system allows you to do retreats. Uh, one of the things I like most about this system is it has completely changed the way that I do retreats. Uh, for the last nine years, 10 years, if you include residency, I've been using copious amounts of solvent, mainly chloroform, to dissolve the gutta percha and then kind of help auger through it. And one of the things that I found uh, with this file system is that I can use the Z4, which is the 2507 variable taper, put that at 650 RPMs without any solvent. And it does an incredible job at removing the gutta percha. I try not to take that to length. I, I don't want to disrupt my apical seal or, or distort my apical anatomy, but getting the coronal two-thirds of that gutta percha out really quickly and efficiently without uh, altering the anatomy is huge. And then I can go back and add just a little bit of chloroform at the end and work my hand files to get there. But this has completely changed how I've done my root canal retreatments ever since I started using the Avalon file system. And what, what file works best for you for that purpose? I think it's the Z4. Okay. Uh, you know, they recommend running it at 500 RPMs. Uh, but Avalon also recommends endo your way. So how I endo my way is turn it up to 650 and it flawlessly goes to the gutta percha without having to worry about any uh, adverse side effects such as separating the file or uh, distorting the canal anatomy. What's been your experience with retreats? Very similar. One thing I've noticed is the reduction in solvent use. Uh, not having solvent um, in uh, the process of removing coronal gutta, gutta percha is extremely helpful. Why? Well, we can see what we're doing. It doesn't make messes. It doesn't get everywhere. Well, with the Z4, I'm able to remove the coronal two-thirds of gutta percha and use just a tiny bit of solvent uh, with a smaller, less aggressive file to then clean the apical third. And what's that file that you that works best in your hands for retreats? So the Z4 uh, is excellent. Um, Dr. Walsh actually was one of the one of the people who recommended it to me that technique that increasing the rpms and, and and that's what's great is that you're flexible and able to use um, these files and change a little bit about them and make it work in your hands i, I totally agree and one uh, another thing that i like about that is that 
previous files, whether it's Vortex Blue, Edge Sapphire, whether it's Pro Taper Gold, they seem to unwind or they're just too flexible to get into the gutta percha even Correct, to begin yeah. with. And so that's not the case here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, although they're very flexible and move around curves, when there's not gutta percha during an initial treatment, sure. during retreatment, they engage that gutta percha very effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, much to my surprise, but I think it's a, a very welcome surprise during my course of treatment. So of the blue shapers, I really like incorporating the ZX. It is an orifice opener and allows me to gain access and feel more confident about putting a longer file like a Z1 or a Z2 um, into that canal. And the ZX uh, of the blue shaper group of files works great for that. So you're speaking about the ZX and how that's a great file for you for opening the orifice. Can you get into some specifics on that? Orifice openers can be extremely useful. Uh, sometimes orifice openers, depending on the manufacturer, may be too stiff. And those can be very dangerous if you're trying to stick something into a canal that's not open wide enough. Um, you can transport and make the case harder for yourself. Some are too flexible and you're not, being, you're not able to get into a canal um, because the tip may bend or, or break before you're in a canal. What I really like about the ZX is it's flexible enough that I feel confident that I'll be able to lift Denton as I brush. Um, but stiff enough that I am going to penetrate um, into the canal. The brushing motion of that file really pulls a lot of tooth structure um, in places where you want tooth structure pulled away um, and allows me to confidently then enter the canal with, say, a Z1 or a Z2 following that file. So, Dr. Pappas, would you be willing to walk us through orifice to apex, just, just your technique and how you use the files? Absolutely. So uh, my protocol uh, takes into account some coronal flaring. So my previous system, ProTaper, using um, their files to open up that coronal two-thirds. But with the Blue Shaper, I'm able to open up that same area with the ZX, the Z1, and the Z2. After establishing working length, um, I'm able to then shape the apical third. Um, previously, was using a, so a system from Edge Endo um, called the X7. However, now with the apical shaper, I'm able to effectively complete the same type of apical shaping that I desire, however, at a more conservative and more minimally invasive way with an O3 taper. So you had mentioned that you like to finish on O3 preps. Do you have any trouble with your standard O4 cones fitting the O3s? No. Um, it's been really nice that you're able to then fit that O4 cone in. My cone fits have been perfect. Haven't really noticed any... Um, uh, problems obturating, uh, which is remarkable because, you know, when you're changing your taper, one of the things you're concerned about is that your old armamentarium is not going to, um, you know, com be compatible. For sure. One of the things that I've noticed is oftentimes I drop cones. So I finish yeah. my apical size and then I drop cones. So that really doesn't come into play as much if I'm going from a three to a four taper. Sure. One size smaller. Which is going to bring your cone up a little bit, which is just going to, uh, uh, you know, improve that seat. For sure. And you're allowing for more sealer centric obturation. Yeah. For sure. How do you feel about the Avalon Biomed cones? How do you feel like they're fitting the preps? Are you using those when yeah. you're finishing? I think they're great. I think that um, we touched we touched about this earlier, but having a file and a cone that work in concert with each other is just paramount. Mm -hmm. Having that fit um, snug, um, match the size, especially with a variable taper. I mean, you're using the, the blue shapers more. Um, those are variable tapers. You need a cone that's going to fit that. One of the things I've also thought was really interesting that my assistants like was the paper points. Uh, they, they they feel that they can be more conservative on the paper points, not have to open pack after pack, but can pick just two or three given the case, and and those are able to fit down the canals very effortlessly sure. because they're also tailored for that same variable taper. And the way they're packaged, right? So they're not packaged in the traditional little slim open packs. They're packaged like a departure, which is in reality, they're the same size, same shape. Why not keep the same packaging? Yeah, I think it's brilliant packaging. So being fresh out of residency, you're, you're looking for a file system or at least a way of performing an endodontic treatment that works for you. It works really well in your hands. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, constantly sh communicating with peers, trying to figure out, you know, we've all left residency. Well, what's working for him? What's working for her? Mm -hmm. um, and so... I've just been so happy to have found this group of products all under one roof. Um, there seems to be just a file for every sort of treatment under the sun. Um, and I really can't wait to uh, be able to share this with peers and, and explain, hey, this this file works great in my hands for this. Well, it works also in my hands for that. Um, and just collaborating on a, what seems like a, a whole new world of endodontic files. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. 
you know, like, like we mentioned earlier, after using the files for a few months, for my partner's only feedback was how can we get more and when can we get more? So I, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that we found, uh, found this file system and I, and I can't wait to continue to incorporate this into my practice. Uh, and one of the hardest things about using these files over the last few months is not being able to share it with anybody. Right. So I'm finally excited to be able to get the opportunity to, to share this with the rest of the world and the rest of the country that there's something new and better out there. So, Dr. Walsh, and speaking of the files and the operation and the sealer system, um, this system also comes with capital equipment, hand pieces, if you will. So, wanted to see what your thoughts are, and then, um, you know, as importantly, how you use it. Sure. Uh, well, they come. There's two available hand pieces: the the Z Evo and the Z Evo Mini. Uh, I've personally had a lot more use with the the Evo Mini uh, because I feel like it's it's easy to use. It's lightweight and portable. Uh, one of the things that I like most about it. As a cordless handpiece, it doesn't diminish in torque as you're progressing your files down the canals. The manufacturer's recommended speed is 500 uh, RPM at 4 newton centimeters, and I follow the 500 RPM, but I drop my torque down to 2.6. I still haven't had any trouble allowing the files to progress down the canals adequately. I don't feel like it stops and backs me out like a lot of the previous generations of cordless handpieces. So the cordless handpiece that I've been using has been the Z Evo. Uh, I really like the balance and the weight in my hands. It's a little bit bigger than the, the Evo Mini, uh, but it feels solid in your hands and it feels balanced. doesn't feel like it's going to tip out of your hand. I do also like the battery life. I really haven't seen a diminished torque uh, later on in the day. Sometimes these cordless handpieces can lose battery life uh, and um, become a problem later in the day. I've noticed that uh, my torque setting is a little lower, 2.4, mm -hmm. uh, but I've noticed that towards the end of the day, my instrumentation does not change, and I don't feel any difference with my files. So, Dr. Pappas, I'd be interested to hear about your obturation technique. Um, I think I'm correct in saying that you do warm vertical. Correct. Uh, this system has a um, a down pack and a flow, uh, a Z up and a Z down, as they call it. Just wanted to get your um, experience and how you use it. So, I've been using these products for several months. Um, c correct. I use a, a warm vertical condensation method, um, which requires a down pack and a back fill. Um, the Z down is the instrument that I'm using for the down pack. What's great about this instrument is the ergonomics. It's got a 360 um, touch um, uh, ring around the uh, exterior handpiece. And what that does is allows you to be able to activate your heat in any position. Um, it's sometimes, uh, you know, as we like to try to practice quality ergonomics, sometimes you're um, in a compromised position and being able to activate heat while under a microscope and complete a down pack uh, is extremely helpful. So the Z up is the device I've been using to complete obturation. And it's a push button activated device that releases gutta percha in small bursts. What I like about this is you can release in small bursts um, and then condense um, limiting the uh, chance for any voids uh, and also the ergonomics of it allow the tip to be placed in the canal and provide plenty of room for your uh, microscope to be able to see the canal uh, and make sure that your canal is properly condensed. There's different temperature settings and I like using the temperature setting of 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, I think it melts the pellets that are placed in the, in the, in the mechanism properly and completes our operation extremely well. And I think one of the things that I like also is that you can dial it in between 200 and 250, but it's also push button activated. So it's similar to the old Calamus units, but you don't have to be tied to those little cartridges. You can use the generic gutta percha pellets and refill that continuously. So you don't right. have to buy any extra equipment or any aftermarket things to fit your, your piece of equipment. And I've noticed that the tips are extremely durable. Absolutely. Uh, last thing you want is a tip breaking after multiple uh, bends. I've been, uh, bending these multiple times and have noticed no uh, loss of integrity to the tips. And the tips are quite long, actually. Yeah, I, I feel like beneficial. I, yeah, it is beneficial. I feel like I have nice visibility, nice access around it, like you had mentioned before, as sure. I'm backfilling, so I know exactly what level I'm going to. So with the push button activation, it releases a short burst of gutta percha. What's nice about this short burst is I've noticed that I'm not pulling the gutta percha out with the instrument. Um, that's very uh, beneficial uh, because it reduces the amount of reduce of replacing gutta percha, which can be time consuming. By placing that small burst and removing the instrument, I'm able, able to gently compact that gutta percha uh, and then add more if I need. So there's certain presets that allow for a short amount of heat, um, say three seconds. I prefer a more continuous stream of heat. And so anytime I'm placing the device, I have a preset 
that allows continuous heat when applying pressure to the ring around the, the instrument. This allows me to apply heat only during the time that I would like to. Another piece of equipment that the system offers is the Z activator, the ultrasonic Z activator. Wanted to see if you've had an experience with it and the applications that you like to use it and why. I really like this device. I've been using it for several months. Um, I have gone from an endo activator, which is a sonic activator, uh, to now an ultrasonic activator that's handheld. Um, being able to pass this back to an assistant uh, and actually see when using debris coming from the canals, there's different tips that match the size of the canal, but I've really noticed debris coming up much different than sonic activation. I've noticed many lateral canals present um, after debriding um, with my files. I've really noticed that uh, in combination with our irrigants, by using this device, I've noticed more patent lateral canals um, using a sealer like the uh, Neo Sealer Flow that has um, a, a great flow ability, um, being able to penetrate those lateral canals. So I actually have a few cases um, that demonstrate the whole suite of Avalon Biomed products that we've covered today, um, if you'd like to see them. That'd be great. Okay, so the first case, this is a tooth number 30, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis diagnosis. For example, on this case, I used a mix of several of Avalon Biomed's files, uh, ranging from apical shaper and the blue shaper. For the orifice opening, I used a ZX from the blue shaper file system, uh, and then shaped the coronal two thirds with the Z1 and Z2. Um, after establishing working length, um, I then completed the uh, shaping of the entire canal system, and then finished the case with the apical shaper up to a size 4003. After complete debridement of the canal system, I decided to irrigate the system with sodium hypochlorite and activate that irrigant with the Z activator. Unknowingly, the Z activator opened up several lateral canals, and then the case was obturated with Avalon Biomed's Neo Sealer Flow and Avalon Biomed's pressure points. I used the Z up and the Z down. Uh, for warm vertical condensation. So my down pack was completed with the Z down and then my backfill with the Z up. As you can see in the final, um, there's a lateral canal in mid root on the distal root, um, which was opened during debridement and activation of irrigant. Here's another case I used several Avalon Biomed products on. Uh, this is a tooth number four, previously treated with symptomatic apical periodontitis. As you can note on the pre-op, um, there's a large area of low density on the lateral aspect uh, of tooth number four. When I see this, we're thinking uncleaned lateral canals. And so taking out this material, being able to debride the canal system and um, open up or make this canal patent is extremely important in the retreatment success. So we talked about this earlier, but using the Z4 uh, from the Blue Shaper system, to retrieve this previous obturation material worked really well. Only needed to use some solvent for the apical third. Um, and then the case was obturated using Avalon Biomed bioceramic sealers. After the previous obturation material was removed, I shaped the canal system to a Z5. I obturated the case with Neo Sealer Flow. After the previous material was removed, the case was instrumented to a Z5 from the Blue Shaper system. Irrigation was completed and I used the Z activator to try to activate that irrigant as much as I could to try to gain some patency. Um, as you can see on the final, um, after obturating the case, again with gutta percha and Neo Sealer Flow uh, and using the Z up and Z down, you see that there is a trail of that sealer right to the center of that area of low density that was noted on the scan. These are cases you really like to see this lateral canal headed right toward that radiolucency, um, which makes you much more confident letting the patient leave and um, expecting them back for a six month recall showing full healing. Here's another case showing a relatively advanced case of external cervical resorption. As you can see or appreciate on the pre-op CBCT, there is a small lingual perforation. I opted to treat this case. The patient was complaining of discomfort associated with the lingual perforation, uh, so non-surgical root canal treatment was completed. The case was obturated with neo sealer flow in the apical and middle third, and then neo putty was placed in the coronal third. As you can see or appreciate on the final post op CBCT, there was significant um, removal of structure at that lingual perforation, and the neo putty 
uh, effectively sealed the uh, perforation. The six month recall showed uh, no loss of attachment and no advancement of resorption and the patient is asymptomatic. Well, that's really interesting. I think some of these Hither say class two, class three resorptions are some of the most challenging cases that we see. And unfortunately, we're starting to see them all too frequently. Uh, let me show you a case that I've done. It's very similar to yours where this patient presented and she had no idea that there was any issue at all. And uh, come to find out on number 26, she had class three cervical resorption. And so in this case, I didn't have the heart to tell this 25 year old to extract her uh, lower lateral incisor. I think that's a challenging place for an implant. I think that's a challenging restorative prognosis overall. And so in this case, what we did is we we treated the we treated it. So I did internal repair without surgery, and we got a we got a wonderful result. In this case, I filled the apical portion with gutta percha and neocelar flow, and above that, I placed neoputty. So anywhere subcrestally where I may have. Uh, resorptive perforations or communications with the osseous, osseous tissues. I place neo, uh, neo putty, and above that, I restored it with Fuji 9 to help promote any epithelial attachment once it's above the level of crustal bone. We saw this, this young lady back on three-year recall and took a three-year recall CBCT and found that we're not seeing any progression of the resorption. We're seeing nice epithelial attachment, uh, and equally, we're seeing solid osseous tissue without any periapical uh, reactionary changes. The next case I wanted to show was one where I thought Slim Shaper worked really well for us. This next case is a lower lower second molar on a young lady, and it just has multiple curvatures. It has multiple curvatures in both the mesial and the distal roots. And, you know, for tooth nerds like us, this is kind of fun and exciting stuff, especially when I have the armamentarium to approach this. And I think the Avalon Biomed family of rotary instruments provides the perfect armamentarium to combine their systems and attack this the best we can. And so what I did in this particular case was that I started with slim shapers because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to create a ledge with one of my stainless steel hand files. I wanted to make sure I had patency, that I successfully negotiated both curvatures, uh, both in the distal and the mesial root. Once I was able to get down with the slim shaper, I progressed through the three series of slim shapers, and then I was able to take my Z1 followed by my Z2 down to length. And so using those slim shapers to the advantage of these small ornate curvatures and then slowly enlarging with really super flexible instruments is combining all the best attributes of the Avalon products. So you ever run into those pedo cases where they're, they're hard to treat because it's a hard patient and a hard kid. I have, you know, sometimes I think those are really challenging from a completely different aspect because now you're managing the parent, you're managing the swiggling patient, and you're managing a severe curvature in a tooth. And in those young teeth, we know that the walls can be thinner because they may not be fully developed. Uh, we know that they're in general going to have larger canal anatomy. And so in some aspects, that makes it an, uh, an easier, more straightforward case because we can find the canals. But the next concern there is how do we negotiate them and successfully maintain our minimally invasive approach? Well, I think this is a perfect case demonstrating how apical shapers can work to our advantage of maintaining the canal anatomy while maintaining the minimally invasive approach because I can apically enlarge without having to touch any of the canal walls in the coronal two-thirds of the canal. So I can appropriately instrument that apex to, the, to an appropriate size for chemomechanical debridement and then follow that up with the, the Avalon Biomed cones corresponding to the apical shaper and, and create a nice apical seal for that kid. It's a nice case. Well, thanks guys for sharing the information on those cases. And most importantly, thanks for uh, coming down to Houston. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, our pleasure. So more importantly, when can we expect to be able to get these in our hands and get these to our colleagues? 